Welcome back to the dead fire. Yeah, we wanted to go to the ship, but guess what? I turned back. Maybe, maybe Alvari is here now that we've, you know, waited some time in another world, and I here she is. If the gods must love or hate you, Watcher. Perhaps both. And we have to tell her about the things that happened at the spire. Volcanoes, giant waves. Mel, I've had my fill of this island. It involves no divinities, but I do have some news for you as well. I have decided to take action with regards what? to Castor's incompetence. I have called together a meeting of the Songreta Mia Compressa. Our esteemed investors have come to hear Director Castor's excuses for squandering their fortunes. Alvari smooths the front of her coat and plucks lint from her sleeve. You've witnessed Castor's mistakes personally. And you know what is at stake for us with Ukaizo. The council will want to hear from you, the Canton Chase in particular. She desires to meet yours. The company needs new leadership. Leadership that can make effective use of its most important allies. Let us start here. Ah. Striking a fine impression before the wealthiest men and women in Eora. Uh. Your politics aren't my business. If you bear Castle no loyalty, it will cost you little to admit it. Here, let us both enjoy a little honesty. If I am made director, it will be a simple thing to elevate you in the eyes of the council. Not that we want that, though. You will attend the trial, I hope. Your testimony is a vital part of the proceedings. <sighs> Fine, let's get this over with. Indeed. Come then. I'll send for our esteemed guests. Meet us upstairs when you are ready. Okay. I see. Well, then let's do this. I mean, Castell hasn't been the best. He hasn't also hasn't been the worst. We don't want him harm, so... Let's see if we can talk our way out of this. That would be great. Of course, there's an obvious advantage here, but we don't want that advantage, so it's kind of a... Director Castor's office is nearly unrecognizable through the mill milling crush of bodies. The chamber is suffocatingly warm, and several of the occupants jostle for a place beside the window. To a one, the people around you are dressed in rich fabrics, or else the occasional piece of armor. Few of them look especially pleased to be here. It's about the cacophony that greets you when you arrive. A quiet descends swiftly upon the room, upon the barest and hand gesture from the man now standing behind the disc. The Kantanikis' gaze sweeps across the room, eventually settling on you. I see you have wasted little time in involving yourself, Lord. Around him, several of the onlookers crane their necks to see you at the counter, who the counter is addressing. Castor, Governor Alvari, you are both here? Indeed, Your Excellency. Castor's face is splotchy and damp with sweat. He looks as if he may be ill. Yes, Your Excellency. Alvari wears a restrained smile. <laughs> That's the snakes going at each other. This is to be your witness. We'll remain with silence. Most esteemed guests. This is the Watcher of Cad Nua. Who will say nothing. We were sorry to hear of Cad Nua's fall, Lord. How interesting to find you here. You have my sympathies. I plan to rebuild it. Fishing for the necessary contributions, are you? Let us begin. If the clerks will attend the roll. Albina Carnetto. Duke Remassi Storanzo Miscellona. The Archmage. Devils take your role, Nero. This isn't the Songreta Ducala. We are all here. Let's get this over with. Very well. Then let me extend my sincerest thanks to our shareholders in attendance. Uh, is this going to take very long? I have business to get back to. Nero aims at a, a pointed look down his nose at you. 
You hear this grunted murmur from the wing. Fortunately for everyone, I believe I can make my case in short order. Beside her, Castol seems to sag a little. In deference to present company, we will proceed in Edira. Director Castol, you stand accused of nothing less than gross incompetence, mismanaging of resources, willful deceit, grave charges all. A low murmur starts up around you as the crowd reacts. We have examined the evidence available to us. The numbers are not in your favor, Director. But you will have the opportunity to explain yourself. Now, Alvari. Agrasim, Your Excellency. Estimate Council. I bear Maestro Castle no ill will. <laughs> we have always treated one another with greater respect. But his time is past. I put it plain. The company is bleeding resources. We have identified numerous sources of Adra, and yet, how much of it ever reaches the republics? The expedition to Pocahontas was but the latest failure. Trained workers and supplies gone, and for nothing. Well, that was the only way to stay on good terms with the one now. If I could just say, Your Excellency, if we are to remain in the region, it is only to our benefit that we make allies among the Juana. What does it matter what the Juana want? They should have been driven from the islands. By gaining their cooperation now, we gain a workforce and prevent further hostilities. Clearing the islands would do the same. My esteemed patrons, Castle is afflicted with a kind heart, but the natives will continue to trouble us so long as we remain in the region. Let us take what we can and ensure the benefits of our labors return to the republics. I have more, Your Excellency. Your coin, lords and ladies. Where has it gone all this while? Not to mines and industry, no. The director has spent the bulk of it on frivolous experiments. Th th that is absurd. Anamansi research has gotten us where we are today. Precisely. Enough, Alvari. Watcher, you have had some involvement in these experiments. Do you have anything to add? Oh, well, the research is promising, surely, to speak true. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> halfway we decided that we are pissed off by her. And Castol is not so bad, so... You could be masters of the world with power like that. Coin has done well enough for us already. It truly works. You mean to say that the Animancers have learned how to uh, transport people? Principal Tarvisi leans forward in his chair, watching you intently. I'm sure you don't need to tell, uh, don't need me to tell you the practical applications. Certainly not. Your words are met with a sudden muted roar of animated whispers. We have heard much of a Kaiser in recent days. I wonder, Director Castor, just what are your plans for the fabled city? Nero taps his kill against the desk in steady beats, looking on calmly. The Kaiser holds an enormous quantity of a luminous Adra. Our research has already yielded a results. If we can establish an outpost there, then... Sol has scarcely started his sentence when a handful of the gathered investors start to jeer at him. If we take this opportunity, we can uh, accomplish far more than we initially believed. I could make you rich, lords and ladies, beyond your wildest dreams. Ah, you may be rich in a century or two. Have you that long to wait? Some of you, perhaps, but all? Dreams are all Castle has to offer. We have scores of Adra sites mapped to detail. Why not focus our efforts there? Castle risks your fortune on illusions. That, uh, that is true. We have mapped these deposits for years. The closer we travel to Andra's mortar, the, the denser the deposits. Even Alvari knows this. Well, um... Jonas, establish an outpost on Okaizo, the Juana will never forgive you. They'll come around. 
Our research may even benefit them as well. Even if there is Adra past the mortar, let us grind down the whole of it and be done with the place. Or will the Songreta war against the natives and sea monsters for the next hundred years? We have heard a great deal this day. Alvari, have you any final arguments? Only this. That Director Castle has betrayed his station and our trust by allying himself with a Principe Captain by the name of Furanti. A Principe Captain? You have evidence of this, Alvari? The word of a witness? Nero looks to you, eyes narrowing thoughtfully. A slaver has no business in Nikitoko. He was trying to skirt one along, bring some profit from the slave trade. You cannot bring a Zadra, so you ply an older trade, Castol. That... W well, th that it isn't... Uh... Or is it that you were trying to line your own pockets, Castol? Daring. More daring than I would have suspected. No, my lord. I, I swear it. Castol wipes his brow with a sleeve. Yeah, we <laughs> ruined this opportunity for them. I think we have heard enough. Any final words? My lords, ladies, our enemies will make for Ukaizo in short order. The Valiant Trading Company must be ready. It needs decisive, effective leadership now more than ever. With the Watcher's aid, we have the opportunity to claim an overwhelming victory. One that will carry us all into the history books. The Watcher? You would rely upon a brute. Watch it. Some dignity. Nero casts a weary eye over the proceedings. I've heard all the accusations against you. Castal, any final words? Everything I do, I do to help the company. You know this. Two years ago, you entrusted me to establish the luminous Adra trade. I will continue to serve you, dutifully, and to my best ability. I know now that Alvari has hungered after my position for years. Just as she will hunt after yours if you allow her to rise. She would cast Margarin off her throne if she could. Sadio Alvari smiles. Oh. <laughs> we just don't like her. She's even worse. We, we could even fuck around with him, but... I'm not sure about her. Castal has been a great director. He deserves to stay in power. Aspire much loyalty, Castal. If only it were so amongst your own peers. It is time. Let us put the matter of Castal's dismissal to a vote. All in favor. Hands go up almost at once. It takes only a glance to see that the vote overwhelmingly favors the motion. Avari nods once, perhaps to herself, and closes her eyes. Seeing the outcome of the vote, Castor loses a strangled, breathless cry of dismay, as if wounded. We gave you a chance, Castor. We made it clear what defiance would cost. You have squandered that opportunity. Perhaps you will have better luck in the living lands. Ignato Castor, I hereby pronounce you banished. Exiled from the Valian Trading Company and the Valian Republics by order of the Sangreta Mea Compressa. Wait! You, Percamplanca! Don't do this! Mercy! I believe that brings this meeting to a close. Agresima Watcher. Lueva Alvari wears a small restrained smile as she watches the gathered nobility disperse. She looks at you as you approach, raising one arched eyebrow. Let us speak once the room clears, Watcher. I think we have much to talk about. Hey, hey. <laughs> so now we have her. Look at me. I am still sweating. Alvari stands beside the director's desk, looking down at her hand. She curls her fingers into a fist and then curls them slowly, and smiles. You did well. Ach, very well. A perfect witness. Impartial. As a sly cast her smile as she looks up at you, she plucks a coin purse from the disc. You and I were together in this. Let us seal the pact in coin. We move now with singular purpose. 
and ensure the prosperity of the republics. Trade, coin, civilization, Aimiko. That is what we give them with Ukaizo. And for us, our rightful place in the world. There is but one final distraction that must be seen to. A final obstacle. Very low as a gaze, Solomon. The royal dead fire company. They will not stand idly by as we lay our claim. It is time to do something about that. You have had some success with the Animancers, I hear. It is time for them to earn their keep. Won't the Queen come down on us for this? If she finds proof of our involvement, certainly. Provided we are careful, there will be no such evidence. We will use the Animancer's machines to transport you into the Royal Dead for your company's powder house. You will set the powder house alight. The powder will do the rest. Elette has a modified explosive for you. She'll get into the details. The important part is that it should be enough to blast the entire powder house right to hell. There are risks, of course. The gunpowder is one concern. But the powder house itself is also heavily guarded. Best that you avoid being seen. I won't do this. Careful. Consider that we are talking about more than my own ambitions. You are poised to make a fortune. To leave your mark upon the dead fire for centuries. And should you find the doubts begin to weigh upon your conscience, remember. You have nothing on us. I am the best friend you have left. Elette will be waiting for you at the top of the spire. Good luck. Now, um, having learned this, I think we should go back to the Royal Dead Fire Company. Oh, we're upstairs, okay. So, because Toll is removed. Mm. Yeah, we need to go to the Royal Dead Fire Company and tell them the good plans. Where are they? Are they in the palace? I kind of forgot. Locations. No, not, not really locations. Well, maybe... Oh. I think they're in the palace. I mean, they're the Royal Dead Fire Company, right? They had no, no own building. That's why. The burned book grows warm in your pack. There's a burned book in my pack. Is there a book? Blackwood Log. Artillerist's Manual. Oh, infested Kowiki. The Darker Truth. The Burnt Book of Law. The binding of this tome reeks of smoke. What few pages remain are crinkled and black. Based on the few chapter headers that survived the fire damage, it might have been a book of antiquated laws. Now it's nothing more than a charred relic of authority. We'll open the book. That display at the Kahanga Plaza was shameful to witness. Nothing less than proof of why mortals require a capable rulership and a strong hand. When I walk among them again, chaos of that sort won't be tolerated. Authority and temperament are non-negotiable. Oh, Onikaza wasn't exactly in a mood for compromise. She chose a complicated hour to show her enemies her teeth. But it might have been her only remaining chance. My siblings took a valiant swing at Deothus, but it seems our intervention will have to wait until we've had time to gather our strength. What of you, Watcher? 
your bearing is set and Ukaizo looms on the horizon. After everything you've seen, do you believe mortals are equipped to take control of their destiny? Or do they need a firmer hand? Mm. Firm hand crushed my castle. I could have done without that. Your heart is thick with vengeance. Even in defiance, you serve me. Find Eothas, follow him to Okaizo, and let my justice fill your sails. How my siblings pre preened and postured after the events at Hazongo, but came no closer to consensus. I cannot stomach such disorder. You didn't need to reignite the Adra lighthouse. You helped the colony knowing that Eothas was already moving toward Okaizo. Why? The Wana are protective over the native Adra. I knew they'd appreciate it. Now you see what can happen when mortals assemble to meet a crisis head-on. Collaboration on that scale is rare, but also unreliable. My more compassionate and optimistic siblings are no doubt overjoyed, thinking they've somehow gotten the better of me. How wrong they are! I notice my brother's frozen corner of the beyond is quieter than usual. The doors of the Whitmouth have slammed shut. You made it out of the wide void intact, has anything you witnessed on the other side informed your opinion of the mortal world, Watcher? Home. And on the extent of Inguithan treasury from King Wingauro or Waturi, I the first. So you have. Is it any wonder that the Huana don't pay us the same homage as the Glanfathans? The ancestral memory is thick with resentment. Anything else? Hmm. Naxiva Xkiren showed me how time erodes one's purpose. That is only true to a point. We built the wheel to strengthen mortal essence, and every passage through the cycle enriches the life that comes after. Rimmergan takes a different approach. The White Void is his thick celebration of decay. Prisoners like Nakshiva has exper have experienced more uninterrupted memory than a single lifetime is built to contain. It's no surprise that she would fray at the seams. Anything else? I saw how gods and mortals can cooperate through Wadewind's eyes. If you can call that cooperation, as long as you realize that mortals are tools to serve our ends, I will not call your lesson wasted. Anything else? I'm just happy to be warm again. Of that I have little doubt. Remember what you've learned. It might not save your life, but mortals could do worse than enjoy a broadened perspective. You may not believe me, but I was giddy with delight as I observed that shake-up in the Valian headquarters. Nothing excites me as thoroughly as a good trial. Clever Alvari relies on pragmatism and numbers. Under her leadership, I have higher hopes for the company's financial security, if nothing else. I'm skeptical that coin can navigate society toward anything but corruption, but I appreciate the merchant's willingness to challenge a failure of leadership. So another of Neketaka's dirty secrets comes to light. In a spectacularly dramatic fashion, you should think twice about your Iwana friends if anyone pleads ignorance about the dragon beneath their streets. A dragon is not so easily hidden from the world, much less the eyes of royalty. Outsiders put the Huana in an impossible position, they compromise their ethics to survive. The Iwana think the diminishing of their oldest talent is a test from the gods. They couldn't be more wrong. Everything they do is a test and we observe closely. And yet you allow the beast to hunt the sky again. Was its freedom worth the price of an orderly, balanced society? Think on that. I did not expect the Wahaki to bend the knee to a Kahanga ruler. Perhaps changes are coming to the archipelago faster than I anticipated. This is a pleasing shift of fortune. Submission to rightful authority is the only natural conclusion, when the alternative is war and death. I hope that is a lesson mortals remember. I am beginning to question my trust in you, Watcher. This is a sacred communion, and your conduct is beneath any acceptable standard. Even though you are living up to my admittedly low expectations of mortals, know that I am displeased and that it is a dangerous way to approach me. 
I'll say nothing. Take care with your words and actions. I am not in the habit of offering second chances. Mm. Tell me about this enlightened society you once wanted. You're curious to know more. Excellent. You have but to ask. What would you have even recog How would you have even recognized that society? A valid, self-defeating question, and one which I posed often. We assumed that they, whoever they were, would reveal themselves to us. Rational government would rule in our stead, leaving churches vacant. Thanks to Aethas, we are pulling the dough from the oven before it's had a chance to fully rise. Your unfortunate bastards never had the chance to prove me wrong. Why do the other gods tolerate your position? Opposition can take many forms. If a church embraces and weaponizes my doctrine, that is very different from me rampaging as a titan. Aethas is not known for subtlety. Twice now, he has contaminated the purity of our experiment, and done so with extravagant displays that undermine our authority. I am the counterpoint to the soft-hearted. It makes no difference if mortals pass some arbitrary test. My mind will settle on the matter. Regardless of my feelings, the timings of this crisis forces us to accelerate our schedule. Final judgment comes sooner than any of us would prefer. What happens if someone proves you wrong? If your pantheon found that mortals had cultivated a perfect lawful system to maturity, I would not voice a word in protest. I would merely stand aside and await the in inevitable collapse mortals need, as I know this as well as I know myself. Even a lawful and responsible society would be poised to collapse as long as its architects and strongest adherents were mortal. The satisfaction that my siblings derived from their little experiment would be short-lived. And it would fall to me to clean up after their mess. Make no mistake, Watcher, in this I cannot even be proven wrong. Doesn't this seem counterintuitive somehow? You mean God's crafting a godless world naturally? My siblings desire to influence mortals and steer them in a proper direction, even if that direction led to places we could not follow. I have no intention of being left behind. Society would unravel without its queen to impose strict orders. Well, back to my other questions. Oh, um, I want to know more about Ukaizo. At its brightest hour, Ukaizo was the seed of an empire that dominated the continent. The Wana kings and queens might have expanded their control even further, but we put a stop to that. The Apotheosis project needed two resources of uncompromising importance, Luminous Adra and a multitude of souls. Ukaizo had both. Oh. Okay, so they became gods through Kaizo. What's there now? The city stands as a memorial to different age. Its vacant buildings and flooded streets are a crown, supporting but one jewel, the mechanism of reincarnation. Ukaizo is a city, a gravestone, a memory, and a machine. People act as if Ukaizo is the key to controlling the dead fire. Ukaizo is the Deadfire's true north. Even the Wana, who have long since forgotten Ukaizo's bearing, unconsciously turn to face it in prayer. The last emperor was fond of boasting that an army had never claimed Ukaizo by force. He was easily blinded by pride. Unfortunately, that didn't protect Ukaizo from deceivers within. We feasted and delighted the old ruler, winning his support long enough to activate our machines. From that moment and up to, through the millennia that followed, Ukaizo has been ours. So your rise to godhood actually set back society's development? Within the dead fire, yes, it was a calculated decision. The Wano Empire didn't conform to our idea of societal perfection, and neither did its trajectory. They came close, but some unfavorable habits were woven in the fabric of their culture. If the Wana wanted to prove us wrong, they were welcome to rise from the ashes of their past and embrace a future of our design. So what we've learned? If we destroy Okaizo, the gods are toast. Okay, we'll speak again. Her nods stiffly. You feel her presence drift as a breeze, rustling as it goes. Now back to the Royal Deadfire Company and see what that brings us. What a nice change, eh? Hmm. Oh, 
apparently that wasn't the shortest way or pathfinding is there again. What can we see here? Evil the Bright. Must have sailed far to come here. Yeah, yeah. Serpent's Crown. Let's start at the rooftop, right? And then go back. That would save us time. Run to the rooftop. And then we'll see. Hey there, Queen. What do you do? How do you Every do? Every corner of the dead fire babbles of the devastation from Magrin's teeth. The queen wears a furrow down her brow that looks fixed in place. And the Oathis marches on Ukaizo while I juggle armloads of enemies. This is no coincidence. Nagati is testing me, I say. It suddenly feels that way. If you've spent any time in the dead fire at all, the myth of lost Ukaizo can be no mystery. Nikaza leans forward in her chair. Wasn't it the cap capital of the old Wana Empire? Akira, you have the right of it. Some of us would see its purpose restored. They say the beaches of Ukaizo spanned impossible horizons, and its towers graced the light of distant stars. She blinks up at the sky, her gaze tracing, tracing an unseen at shape. At night, I even... Ah, there is nothing. She waves the matter aside as if brushing him at the moth. Go on. For what do the tribes not fight each other? For what are we united if not to take back the lost Ukaizo? Nikaza shows her teeth. It is difficult to tell if she's smiling or grimacing. Under Wodika's gaze do we keep order. Atop Nagati's seas are we tested. From Akuhu's bowels do we carry wisdom back to the tribe. So many gods. The gods want this for us, I say. We have come this time to knew. restore order and earn back our empire. So, Watcher, do we unite and sail for Ukaizo? Nikaza eases forward in her throne and studies you unblinking. Oh. I'm not ready to come here to this. Don't stand around wasting each other's time. Queen narrows her eyes. Busy yourself making up your mind. I will make preparations to launch an advance force. With or without you. Nikaza motions to the stairs down. Just wanted to tell you about, you know. That blowing up of the lighthouse that should happen. Could happen. Now they're going at each other's throats. What a terrible time to do that. Well, when is a good time for to do that anyway? There's the Queen's Chambers, there is the Prince's Chambers, and there is some stairs. Let's go down then. Talk to the prince. Maybe he can he can help with the Royal Dead Fire Company. Presence is a strange omen, I say. Hey, prince. I say it is not every day that a ship pulls into port from Margarine's teeth. You are not too singed, I hope. Rui looks you up and down, clearly impressed. <laughs> Our enemies scramble for Kaizo, dropping all pretense of strategy in their panic and haste. Sighing, Rui gestures for you to speak freely. Uh, okay. No, nothing new. Okay, okay, okay. If it needs be that way, 
we'll leave you here. And go to our ship and wait what comes of all of this. And talk to the steward. Maybe she has something better to say. Of course, the principi also wants something from us, but we want nothing from them. I mean, we could talk to Archimere, but what would he have to say, really? Probably absolutely nothing, so... Get to the seas. Now, uh, how do we enter the ship? Ship management. We had ship management. Inventory. Can we like rest or wait? And wait a bit. One hour. Ah, I forgot how we get access to that again. Map. Ship. How do we get access to the ship? Oh, you, yeah, we, we would like to hire you. But we have no room for you, alas. Well, we could stuff you in here, you know. Can you do? You're a deckhand, okay. the junk but isn't our <sighs> go to splinter drive mm. I don't know Ah, now we're on the ship. <laughs> that arrow. I think I've used it the first time. So we can see now if she's in there or not, the steward. Did we take her with us? I hope so. A moment of your time, Watcher, if you will. Yes, steward. Some of the hands discovered an unusual crate in the ship's hold. How did a crate get onto my ship unnoticed? Unfortunately, the ship lacks the defensive fortifications of Cad Nua. A crate could have been slipped aboard at any of our ports of call. All right. Assuming it wasn't placed among our goods as we took on supplies. Oh. What kind of crate? It is roughly a yard to a side and labeled beans. The hands who noticed it were tasked by the cook to bring up ingredients for the evening stew. So no beans in the crate. A wave of affirmation rolls from the steward, the spiritual equivalent of a nod. Thank you, steward. I'll go see what it is. The hand left the crate in the hold, if you wish to examine it. The bust falls into silence. Thank you. The proving. What is that? Hey, Bella. 
This one's right, a small sailor. Bird, uh, <laughs> there they are. There they are. The sense of food, salt, spices and drink mix with the stale odor of old grass, the musty stink of rats and the ever-present fragrance of the sea. Renegades of Junk rocks gently and you hear faint whispers like the quiet brushing of winds against the sails. Not far in you fin find the crate in question. Its sides split by crowbars, the dry grass used as packing material spilled across the floor. Within stands an intricately crafted chest of some dark tropical wood. A polished visage peers up at you, a triumvirate of wild animal faces carved in the swirling Juana style. The front of the chest bears an iron latch affixed to a complex iron mechanism that runs to the top four corners of the chest. You see no bolts or keyholes. Examine the latch. Great. You see no locking mechanism. If it's a trap, you don't see any evidence of it. Uh, examine the carvings. Oh, chewing on the nub of his pipe, El Edda frowns at the crate. Looks like a whole mess of metalwork without much in the way of purpose. Not a trap on it. Okay, examine the carvings. Oh, gods. <laughs> Three animals seem to be a spider, a stelgare, and a boar. You don't know if they have greater significance. Shoti's nose wrinkles at the image. I reckon this might be the one, a hunting god, like Galloway, but not exactly. Okay, open the chest. You turn the latch to the right, and a series of metal arms shift with it. The clasps holding the top of the chest come free, and you easily lift the lid. Laying within, cradled by grass, is an Aumauan head. The mottled flesh of its neck raggedly cut free from the rest of its body, wherever that might be. Shorty peers down at the grim cargo. I can't say I was expecting a head, not even a little. Want to fetch my lantern? As you peer down at the head, you feel a strange prickling sensation along your skin. Soul energy rises from the crate, throbbing in the air in time with the beating of your heart. It begins to take shape before you. Oh, gods. You can see me. It's really you, then. The captain of the Defiance. Ah, it's Renegades of Junk now, but yes. Oh, this is fantastic! How satisfying it is to know one did not give one's life in vain. You did give your life. I come from the island of Kazuwari, and we need your aid. So you sent your head over. I, I think you need more than my aid. You need a... I don't know. Head surgeon, or what, something like that? So how how did you come to be dead? An unfortunate side effect of encountering a swiftly moving blade at roughly shoulder height. Yes, we had to get a messenger to you, but we couldn't let me be seen leaving Kazuwari. An inelegant solution, maybe, but an efficient one. You're more excitable than most of the spirits I meet. Some of us take more to death than others, I suspect. Spirit into an indistinct face splits into a frightfully wide grin. Funny thing about being dead. You know those uh, social limiters? The little spoken and unspoken rules that keep us all in check? Stripped away. I'm more myself now than I ever was in life. I came from Kazuari, where the most skillful hunters, the most hardened explorers, the deadliest warriors all gather to earn the favor of Tawamawai. Tawamawai. The faces of the hunt. Some kind of Galloway god. But Humaire, the island's caretaker, says the essence that sustains the island has sickened, curdled, she called it. The animals, the trees, they all churn with anger and fear. Hmm. Who, who is that to Amowai? The faces of the hunt, that which hunts kills and endures respectively some believe them to be the tripartite aspects of Galloway. not that i would know i've never asked them we need a watcher no one else can talk to souls humire said and souls are our problem you're a watcher right the watcher the one who died and lived again who speaks to the gods that's the watcher we need you caught me i knew it i knew humire wouldn't have lied you will help, won't you? Oh, 
I'll help if I can. What do you need me to do? Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you. Speak to Homaire at Kazuari, Watcher. She'll be able to better explain the situation than I am. Where's this Kazuari? Kazuari's a huge island west of Hasango. It's pretty hard to miss, what with the high cliffs and waterfalls. There's one thing you should know. The faces of the hunt jealously control who enters and leaves the island. But there's a waterfall on the southern side of the island that will allow you to sneak in, so long as you're circumspect. I guess you should also know. He grimaces. The island's residents might not take too kindly to your <clears throat> presence if you're found. They're, um, a prickly bunch. But I'm sure that won't be a problem for you. Sure you have a chance to respond to the spirit's warning, you notice Constantin hovering nervously behind you. Do you need something? No, you know, I, I just... <clears throat> he clears his throat nervously. The thing is, I might know something about that box there. A little more than something. All I'm saying is, maybe you don't want to touch it. Maybe we tie a big rock to it and throw it overboard. Right now. Um. I'm going to need a bit more to go on than that. There's a box with a dead man's head in it. There's a spirit in the head too. Great. That's... That, that's great. Seem to know a lot about this. Why is that? Maybe we should talk about it later. You seem to have your hands full. Hey, hello. I'm still here. Are you going to help us? We could really use the help. Uh, helping people who don't want my help sounds like fun. They're really not so bad once you get to know them. They're almost nice. Well, no. That's a lie. But Humare's all right. Once we've arrived, I can help you find your way into the heart of the island. You know, if you want me to, <clears> I <throat> wouldn't want to presume. In the meantime, I'll be here. Well, behind you, really, with the rest of the spears following you around. Okay, we have a head here. That grants an aid. Utaru's attacks heal the wielder if they are nearby and come more powerful as he's empowered by the souls of the crucible. Aha. Uh -huh. Severe head feels about as heavy as a coconut. It smells faintly of embalming spices with thyme and lavender standing out in the subtle bouquet. A soul bound to the decaying flesh rests in a dormant state, but the right incentive could usher it back to awareness for a limited span of time. Interesting. Wonder what Kaw's up to. Oh, that's just great. And now? Ah, oh, okay, so we could... Hmm. We could speak to the Imperial Command. As an Uikaru. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe she would like to know. Someone wants to blow her powder hours up. This also, though. Waterfall and the southern shore. Yeah, you know what? We'll try to get to the Brass Citadel now. We've looked that up, and then we'll go... In the next episode, we'll go to Kazuari. But now we'll check if we can still do that thing in the... The Brass Citadel. Where was it now? I think the Imperial Command. Let them go at their throats while we're away. <sighs> Maybe we'll meet Castol. <laughs> Shame, we, we could have hired him. So that's her office. Got something to say here, you know. Rao Tai needs a reprieve from the storms, and Deadfire needs order. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I okay, need okay. To join forces once and for all. Not right now, you know. And I know Aethus won't. Oh well. 
Now the problem is we would blow the powder house up, but that would mean we would be committed to the to the Valian Trading Company, and we don't want that either. So. <sighs> Apparently no one wants to listen to us here. They just want something. It's like in real life. <laughs> Let's head on to the east exit and leave the city, finally. Maybe we can get to the island already. We also still need to find someone who can make these Blackwood things go. Sometimes I wonder if we should have let the slavers uh, live a little longer. So we could rob more of them. <laughs> that would have been incredibly cruel. So, so, so. Um, can we bring that back? So we're seeking Kazuari. That was um, somewhere... So west of Asomo, so it must be somewhere here, right? Yeah, it should be here. I mean, there's more here. Great Horix. Oh, look! There's the waterfall. Oh. You find yourself in cold, suffocating darkness. Ah, oh, again. There is a familiar weight in your hand. A lantern. It sputters to life, and the world shifts into focus. A staircase spirals endlessly below you. With nowhere else to go, you start down. A wave of blistering heat hits you. Ah. Oh. Then a sea salt wind. Divine voices boom and screech. Their words shake the platform beneath you, shake the very air around and there's you. There's Nagati. The gods <laughs> are fighting. God. Lay your blame elsewhere, Warica. I won't suffer your arguments any longer. Magrin looms large before you, an accusing finger leveled at the melted visage of Wodica. Wodica screws her mouth into a sneer. You fool! If only we had attacked him when I first proposed it. Accusations drip bitter as bile from her tongue. Oh. <laughs> Just shut up. Even the kith loses patience with you, Wudika. The pallid knight looks down at you. A frown etched deep in her otherwise statue still features. I am afraid we are not at our best. The watchers return. Perhaps we should hear what he has to say. Alia's oh, yes. birds chatter oh, anxiously God. among themselves. <laughs> Wal's many eyes alight on each god in turn. We make little enough progress on our own. That's obvious. Not for lack of trying. Feathers rise along the crest of Helia's head as she stares pointedly at Magrin. We try, but agreement eludes us. Andra's storm-dark eyes swivel to meet yours. Is there nothing we can do? Magrin glances at the pallid knight from the corner of her eye. After a thoughtful pause, she speaks. The time has come for us to seize the power we have long left untouched and absorb our scattered children. Andra nods, her lure bobbing bright. Terrible though it would be, perhaps you are right. Didn't mention Margaret mentioned this once before. I did, and I was scolded like a child for my terrible audacity. A curl of steam rises from her nose. The pallid knight looks on. Impassive. Should we be killed in our god forms, we can possess you 
our godlike children. Or should we face a force too powerful to stand against, we can absorb your souls, granting us additional strength. What? Yes, your life and thousands of others would be forfeit to serve the greater good. The Pallid Knight speaks with the chilly temperance possessed only by the God of Death. Who's good, yours? We are your gods, forged of thousands upon thousands of willing souls sacrificed on the altar of progress. Yes, our good is greater, but the time for that plan has long passed us by. Are we to keep nothing for ourselves? Not a single secret retained? Not a solitary mystery? Magrin elbows one of Wal's floating eyes away. Aethys will lay bare our every secret soon enough. What is one or two revealed now? But we get ahead of ourselves. First, the Watcher must get to Ukaizo. And that will be a trial all its own. Oh. <sighs> What do you mean? The guardian of Ukaizo has stood watch over that place for millennia. It will not stand aside, not even for Barith's herald. Helia, who had been lost in quiet, anxious conversation with her birds, breaks in. It yet lives. Of course. Our progenitors crafted it. A pair of Helia's finches come to join Wal's floating eye. They hover just out of Magrin's reach and swoop in to poke her when she's not looking. And the Watcher will be forced to reckon with it if he wishes to confront Aethys. The birds at last linger too long, and Magrin slaps them away. They burst into a cloud of essence, then reform, and fly in a screeching chorus back to Helia. What, the Guardian of Kaizo? A creature crafted by the Inguithans to protect the machinery of reincarnation. It doesn't care much for visitors. Will you divulge our every secret to the kith, Mogren? Mogren shrugs. If it suits me. Go prepared, Watcher. The Guardian will not stand aside. Not even for the Herald of Barath. Oh. But won't Eothus take care of it? It is not one of Galloway's mindless beasts. It has a heart and a mind, and it will throw neither away to oppose Aethus. And Aethus will not fight the creature. It would prove little more than a distraction for him, especially as my tsunami and Mogren's volcano couldn't stop him. Why can't you just uh, get rid of it? It is its own creature, Watcher. It does not listen to us. There is another topic we have yet to address. The Pallid Knight holds up one gauntleted hand. And the other gods fall silent. Tell me, Watcher, where do you stand? Where do we stand? What do you think of Aeothus's scheme to destroy the wheel? Don't say anything wrong. Uh, I didn't still don't understand it. What will happen when Aeothus destroys the, the wheel? The pallid knight spreads wide her hands. Think of the beyond as a reservoir, the in-between as storm clouds and souls as rain. When a living thing dies, its soul enters the in-between. And when the in-between grows full, it releases souls into the beyond, where they wait to be redistributed to new bodies, new lives. The wheel is the process by which souls are moved from the in-between to the beyond, from the rain cloud to the reservoir, and from the reservoir into the living world. Without the wheel to mediate the transfer and redistribution of souls, the souls of all who die remain in the in-between. And without souls to fill it, the beyond gradually empties, trapping all of the remaining souls in existence in the in-between. When the beyond is empty and the last creature on Aeora dies, that is the end of everything. It is Rimergon's future, the one he wants for us. How does that affect the gods? Soul essence sustains us. We feed off it, off the little fragments you mortal kith shed like snakeskin as you pass into your next life. Without sustenance, we starve as any mortal might. We die and leave a great silence behind, an eternal emptiness from which nothing is born. I prefer to think of it as a very long vacation. I am certain Rimmergaard would appreciate your company. Tell us, Watcher, where do you stand? Oh. 
We can no longer count on the gods for guidance. Kith will have to figure this out on our own. Perhaps you misunderstand. This is not a test you will overcome on your own. Aethys intends to change the fundamental structure of life and death. Does that not frighten you? You, Kith, who are most vulnerable. Oh. Fatalism helps no one and solves nothing. Aethys loves the mortals more than any of us. He has always been their greatest champion. He believes Kith will rise to his challenge. I am not so sure, but I look forward to watching them try. We'll say nothing. What if Aethys is right and Kith succeed in rebuilding the wheel? What then? I don't know, but I'm you curious to find out. Let's avoid the matter like a true politician. Well, grins. Always, Watcher. And what if they fail? Then they die. And so do we. We have to help them. Helia's voice rises, near to panic. Warica drives her fist into her hand. Help them? We should finally bring them to heal! The Pallid Knight raises a hand and stares at Warica until she falls silent. Watcher. Aethys yet values your counsel. The Pallid Knight's eyes bore into yours. An impassioned plea from the Hound of Aethys may still temper his actions. Confront him at Ukaizel. I'll make him heed my words. A bark of dry, bitter laughter escapes Wodeka. You believe you will succeed where I have failed? <laughs> <laughs> well, you like a certain charm. <laughs> the future of Kith and the gods rests on your shoulders, Watcher. So I hope that you do. The Pallid Knight's oh. stern countenance softens. Time moves swiftly away from us now. The Pallid Knight spreads her hands before her. Go, Watcher. Do what you must. The edges of your vision begin to dim. Like a sun setting, twilight encroaches on your mind. The Pallid Knight conjures a blinding white light in her palm that swiftly grows to engulf the room. Then, the crack of thunder rends the air and you feel the floor drop out beneath you. You come to flat on your back, staring at an all too familiar ceiling. Alone, once again. Oh, that was certainly something. Oh. The gods are suddenly more diplomatic for some reason. It's kind of odd, right? It's kind of odd. Don't know what to think of this. So we have to travel to Okaizo, defeat the Guardian, and or maybe haggle with the Guardian. And then we'll see. Now let's travel to this island first, and then we'll see. Are there more to confront us or to do any anything? Whoop. Kazuari. There it is. How could I have missed it? <laughs> the sea below is beneath your vessel. Whoop. What happens now? You stumble to the side, grabbing the rail to keep from falling as Renegades of Junk rocks hard to port. Luca returns to his feet, examining his fingers and wincing. God's alive, Ikiuk, what in Andra's holy name do you think you're doing up there? It weren't my fault, you sudden bilge red Ikiuk spits back. The helmsman turns to you. Felt like something went under the ship, Captain. Or the man gestures wildly to starboard. Captain! And stumbles back from the deck. Either I need to be giving up the drink for good, or there's a god's damned colossal monster down there. Beneath the surface of the water, you make out a long sinuous form, no mere fish. The creature swims with two pairs of legs and a long thin tail. Your lungs feel suddenly empty, and you gasp as your stomach turns. It's a dragon. You fall sideways into light. The light fades into day. Ah. You stand in a forest glade hung thick with shadows. Tall trees surround you. The shriek of a deer pierces the air before being abruptly silenced. 
From out of the dark, Loba Stelgar and the wolf, followed by a thickly muscled man draped in furs, Galloway. Ah, that's you, Galloway. Herald of Barath. Were you not content to destroy my creation at Signeth Moor? Do you intend to meddle here as well? Leave. Now. Smell like ranked blood and days old sweat wafts off him in a wave. I will warn you only once. If you tread upon my island, it will consume you. The large beasts at his side step forward in unison, their tails angrily swishing the air. So you're not responsible for the head I receive. I am not. Though Muatu is mine, and I will claim him in time. Why don't you want me to come here? That was different, unless you've got a monster-making machine here too. The wolf at Galloway's flank growls low in its throat. <laughs> I have warned you. May aught that follows be on your head. With a sound like a thunderclap and a bright burst like lightning, the forest disappears, and you are thrust back into your body. You blink against the fading flash. When you can see again, you find your hands bloodless and aching, gripping the railing of your ship. Your eyes trace the giant lizard's path towards the nearby island. It seems to be swimming north, away from the waterfall. You lose sight of the beast as it plunges into the depths. Muatu's voice seems a mere whisper after the power of the gods. I felt such rage from that beast. Hunger too, and beneath all of it, I think fear. Galloway seems pretty unhappy with more than just my presence here. The Lord of the Hunt sent that beast. Muatu's words rise in pitch and volume. Everyone on Kazwari could be in danger. You have to help them, please, Watcher. His voice echoes at the edge of your perception as your focus returns to the deck of the Renegades of Junk. The crew, eyes wide, stare at you. Calm down, everyone. Whatever it was, it's gone. Many frowns. Don't mean it won't come back. The marina mumbles. When the gates of junk rocks gently, the large landmass beckons. So. Thank you for watching and happy gaming to you. Quite a lot was happening without a fight this time. But there will surely be fights on this island of Kazuari. And we'll see what awaits us there. Have a great time. Until next time and happy gaming. See you soon. In the Deadfire.